Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making Hoover Stew. And this is a depression era recipe and it was made in the soup kitchens and in the camps in the late 30s, early 40s. It was one of those meals that got our grandparents and our great grandparents through some really tough times. And it's one of those that are gonna help us get through these times. This meal is made to feed about eight people. You could stretch it a little farther. And this is another good meal that you would maybe want to serve some cornbread or something like that with. Anyway, let's go over the recipe. You need a pound of hot dogs, a pound of pasta, two cans of tomatoes. Now, if you've got fresh tomatoes in your garden, by all means, use those. You're going to need about, oh, four cups or so of diced up tomatoes to go in this. And a can of corn. You can also add a can or two of beans to it any kind of beans will work. You can use kidney beans, pinto beans, northern beans, black beans, just whatever you want. And you're gonna need a little water to go in it. Now, as far as the pasta goes, you can use any kind of pasta. Just a pound uncooked pasta, and if you buy it in bulk, that's gonna be between three and a half and four cups if you measure it out. I do recommend buying it in bulk to save money. Now, if you've got it, chop you up an onion to go in this. And I suspect the original recipe that was made in the soup kitchens and in the camps, um, there were a lot of work camps and a lot of camps where so many folks were homeless then, and onions were something they could get their hands on, so I'm sure they threw that in here. Um, I'm using some onion powder today and just salt and pepper to season mine with. So I'm gonna get my pot turned on. I've seen a lot of people make this and they kind of use a complicated process to make it. Now keep in mind, this was made in bulk in soup kitchens and it was made in camps where people were homeless. So they weren't putting stuff in the pot, taking stuff out of the pot and they were throwing it in there one ingredient at a time and making it and they were cooking it in the way so that it would have the most flavor. And my granny used to make this when we were kids and this is how she did it. So this is how I'm doing it. I'm going to start by putting my hot dogs in my pan. And you need, or my pot, you do need to cut them up just in little round pieces. Um, how big you cut them is up to you. If you've got to feed a whole lot more people, I mean, you know, if you've got a big crowd to feed and you can only afford a pound of hot dogs, cut them up really small so that they spread out in this and add more beans and more pasta and more tomatoes and more corn. I mean, this is a meal that you can make, you know, to feed a pretty big crowd for just a few bucks. You can still get a pack of hot dogs for $2. Watch for the sales. You can get the pasta for less than a dollar. Um, if you've got tomatoes in your garden, they're totally free. If you have to buy them, you're probably looking at another $2, but get a big can if it's cheaper. Um, beans, you can still get for about 60 or 70 cents a can, but if you've got leftover dried beans that you've cooked, and this is a great recipe, if you've just got a few leftover beans and you wanna make a meal out of it, use your leftover beans in this. And then if you've got fresh corn, just cut a couple ears off the cob. If you don't, you know, a can of corn, you can still get for 50 cents, the cheap stuff. I don't drain anything because we're gonna use all of this, the vegetable juices to kinda add some more flavor to this. And you're gonna have to have some water and you're gonna have to adjust the water. I'm starting with two cups. It depends on how much broth you want in your stew, how much water you're gonna add. Now, if you've got an onion, go ahead and add your chopped up onion in. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of this onion powder. You can use onion powder, you can use diced onions, you can use whatever. And I'm going to adjust that more to suit my taste as I cook this. But browning that onion powder or your fresh onions, if you've got them, in with your hot dogs is going to add flavor to your stew. And, you know, 
like I said, kind of the idea is to get the maximum amount of food and the maximum amount of flavor for the cheapest price. And even if you have to buy all this, you can make this whole pot for five or six dollars and, you know, feed a lot of folks with it. My onion is kind of starting to burn and I'm not adding any fat to this. I'm going to put a little bit of water in there to get that onion off the bottom of my pan. This would be a really good recipe for a little bit of your leftover bacon grease. Throw a little bit of that in here and brown these hot dogs in it and it would add a lot of flavor to it. You could also use a little bit of butter or something like that if you wanted to. But if you were in a camp in the 30s or 40s, you probably well, you might not have had any leftover grease for sure or butter or anything else. But, you know, if you do, the fat adds calories and it helps it fill you up. It makes the meal go farther and, you know, it makes it more filling. Now, if you're getting a lot of potatoes out of your garden, you can even use potatoes in this. Just dice them up kind of small and make the same recipe with potatoes. This is also another good recipe to season with a little bit of chili powder or even a packet of taco seasoning or something like that. You know, use your imagination because that's what folks did in the 30s and 40s. Um, and like I said, if you're making this in a camp on the side of the road or in a soup kitchen, you're not going to put stuff in the pot and take it out. You're going to start, you know, adding your ingredients and just keep adding them. You don't have to take time to brown your hot dogs if you don't want to, but it does add a lot of flavor. And especially if you're throwing fresh onions or fresh garlic or something in there, you're probably gonna wanna brown that a little bit. But it's up to you, you don't have to. And when it gets as brown as you want it, go ahead and add your tomatoes in. And I actually have two kinds of tomatoes here. Any kind will work, even tomato sauce if that's all you've got. I've got some diced tomatoes and some petite diced tomatoes. One of them does not have salt in it. When you're seasoning this, keep in mind how much salt is in your canned vegetables if you're using canned vegetables because you're going to have to adjust that salt to suit your taste. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my tomatoes and I'm going to add my beans in. Now I'm gonna wait just a little while to add my corn in. And like I said, the beans are optional and any beans will work, especially leftover beans. And um, you can add more beans if you need to feed more people. The beans add protein and they add fiber and they certainly make the dish more filling. If you uh, need a low salt diet, I know hot dogs have salt in them already, use the low salt vegetables or no salt vegetables or fresh vegetables, which don't have any salt in them, and then add your salt at the end of cooking. That way you won't need as much and it will still have the flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little pepper in here. Oop, not that much to start. And that's probably close to a teaspoon and I'm gonna go ahead and add a little salt in and a little bit more of my onion powder um, um, I'm adding about a teaspoon of salt man yeah, that's about a teaspoon of salt it went all over my hand so it looked like a lot more than what it was you know the fresh onion of course is better if you've got it and you don't have to have any onion at all, but it adds a lot of flavor to it. Granny always put a fresh onion in hers, but I know nowadays a lot of folks are having to buy everything, um, especially because more and more of us live in cities, and if you live in a city and onions are a dollar a piece, you know, you might not be able to put an onion in it. So the onion powder does give it a lot of flavor. Now I'm gonna put my lid on this and I'm gonna simmer that stuff for just a minute before I add in my water and my pasta. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my water, I'm sorry, or some of it. I'm gonna put about a cup in there. 
and save me a little here. And like I said, you're going to want to adjust that. I'm going to let that simmer and come to a boil before I add my pasta. Um, you know, this is one of those recipes that, like I said, you can feed a big family for five or six dollars with this. I know a lot of folks are living alone now, especially elderly folks, and you don't have family with you, and a great many people my age and older are now living in RV parks. If you're one of those folks living in RV parks, or if you're just living alone and you're older, or even you're living alone and you're younger, this might be a good time to get back to a kind of community eating, which was something that folks did in the 30s and the 40s in order to make their food budget go farther and also in order to help take care of their neighbors. There were a lot of people, a lot of neighbors taking care of neighbors back then, and we're gonna have to kind of get back to that. But if you had five, six, seven folks that live right around you, and maybe you could make dinner, take turns making dinner and sharing it with each other, that's a great way to cut your food costs, not have to eat the same thing for a week straight. I mean, I know when you live alone, if you make something like this and you make the whole recipe, you're going to be eating this for a week straight. Well, I don't know that I want to eat this for a week straight. But if you happen to be living in an apartment complex or one of the RV parks, like I said, where so many people my age or older have decided to go, get together with your neighbors and take turns cooking dinner. And that way you have something different every night and you're saving a lot on your energy costs because you're not heating up your kitchen every night. You're sharing dinner with eight other people every night or seven other people every night and you're taking turns heating up the kitchen, you're taking turns doing that work and it's a great way to kind of take care of each other. It's a great way to have extra fellowship so that you're not alone. This is not a good time to be alone because things are very trying and it would be very easy to get discouraged in this time if you don't have other people to help lift you up. So if you live in a community where you're close to other people, try to get you a dinner group together that you can cook and share dinner with and have fellowship with other folks at night instead of being alone and by yourself. Because like I said, this is not a good time to be alone and by yourself. You need people in your life. And after all, Jesus said we are our brother's keeper. So, you know, keep each other. And it's a great way to watch out for each other. Okay, once you get your pot to a good rolling boil and you feel like you've simmered your tomatoes long enough to about have them cooked, give it a stir and take the lid off. And now we're gonna go ahead and add our pasta. And you wanna cook it until it's tender. And every pasta is different. Use your box as a kind of a guide. Um, I think this said 10 to 13 minutes. Um, and it might take a little longer than that because we're actually using the tomato juice and stuff. But just keep an eye on it once you add your pasta to it. Keep it stirred, you don't want it to stick. And I can tell right now I am going to need that other cup of water because you can see in here I don't have nearly enough juice for my pasta to soak up and even get tender. Because I've already got my pasta in here, I want to add this slow. I want to try and keep my pot boiling if I can. How much water you're going to need, you know, you just don't ever know. And like I said, you are going to have to adjust it. Um, and you might like your stew with a little more water in it. And if you do, just add more. If you've got some bouillon cubes, beef or chicken, you could throw a couple of them in here to add some flavor to it too. Or a little powdered bouillon or some of that Beyond Soup based stuff. This, like I said, is a meal that was made in soup kitchens and camps in the 30s and 40s. It's also a meal that can be made with the stuff that folks are getting from food pantries nowadays. Um, this is a lot of the kind of food that they're handing out in food pantries. 
So this would be a good meal to take some of that stuff, some of those canned vegetables that you get from the food pantry and use them to make a meal, something different, not just a can of vegetables and a pack of hot dogs. I know people will only eat so many hot dogs before they start to riot. I mean, <laughs> I raised four kids through the last little recession that we had and I know things got tied around here and everybody got a little sick of just eating hot dogs. So you gotta do something different with them. And when you're talking about $2 for a pound of meat, there's not much meat you can still get for $2 a pound. And you know, this helps these kind of recipes. You can turn the heat down a little bit if you need to, but keep in mind, you do wanna keep this boiling. Um, once you put the pasta in there, if you don't keep it boiling, the pasta is going to get like soggy and it's not going to be as good. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. Um, because you're cooking it with a lid off, which you do want to do once you add the pasta, quite a bit of my water is evaporating off in steam. And I don't think there's going to be enough in here for my pasta to continue to cook. You can see, you know, I still have a lot of liquid in here, but that pasta is going to keep soaking it up. So just keep an eye on yours and add water as you need it. I put about another half cup in there, so that's a total of about two and a half cups. Okay, when your pasta gets pretty close to done, go ahead and add your corn. Now, I've saved my corn until near the end because if you boil that corn that whole time, all the pasta and tomatoes and all that stuff are cooking. It's going to be tough as leather when your um, Hoover stew gets done. If you cook corn too long, it just makes it tough. And a lot of people don't like it in stews and stuff like this because they cook it too long and it gets tough and they don't like the texture. So save your corn until it's almost done and then add it in. You do want to cook it just a little bit just to mesh those flavors together good. And you can kind of see again how much liquid I got in here. You don't want it, it's supposed to be a stew, so it's supposed to be hearty. It's not supposed to be a soup, so you don't want a ton of liquid in it, but you do want some. You gotta have something to sop your biscuits or your cornbread in. And I've said this before, adding some kind of quick bread to a meal like this helps fill folks up, makes your dish go farther, and it just makes the whole dinner a lot more satisfying if you've got a little bread to go with it. And you can do biscuits or cornbread or, or make them in a pan. We do have up some um, pan biscuits and I'm going to do that cornbread again. I have up a basic hoe cake recipe, but it is very, very basic. It's the old, old, old traditional, got nothing in it pretty much except cornmeal and hot water. But I'm going to do you some fried cornbread and I, that will probably be the next video we do. So you can make that without turning your oven on. And it's also easier to make it in small amounts, especially if you're living alone. But like I said, get together with your neighbors and have dinner. Get you a group of at least six folks so that you can share meals and fellowship. Now, the only way to tell when your pasta is done is to taste it. You can pinch it and kind of get an idea, but you're going to have to taste it. And that's done. Now, you don't want to cook it past that point where the pasta is done. If you cook it past the point where the pasta is done, then the pasta is going to get soggy and nobody's going to want to eat it. You also don't want to cook it past the point where the pasta's done because your leftovers are going to be soggy. Now, you can eat this leftover, um, and when you reheat it, you're going to have to add a little bit of water to it. It makes pretty good leftovers. Adjust your salt and pepper and onion. If you do, you know, some kind of spice, like chili powder or something in it, adjust that to suit your taste. You could throw some hot peppers in here when you cook this, if you've got them in your garden especially. Anything you've got in your garden that would go with this, throw it in there. Tomatoes, peppers, onions, fresh corn, use your leftover dried beans that you've cooked in here. I mean, 
this could be an almost free meal really just buy the pack of hot dogs if you've got a garden but if you don't it's still pretty cheap and you can see here this is a big old pot of stew so if you set this on your table with some cornbread or some biscuits it'd feed a crowd with some cornbread or biscuits i'd say you could probably feed 10 or 12 people with this and you could certainly add another can of beans to it i mean it don't have too many beans in it and you could cut, cut your hot dogs up in smaller pieces and you know so that they spread out more evenly through the stew and fed more people i mean the more stuff you add to it of course the more folks it's going to feed but this pot that you can make for way less than a dollar a person i doubt you'd have six dollars in this would easy feed eight to ten people hang on to this recipe share it with your friends make a pot and share it with your friends and this is one of those things that like like I said about so many of our other old recipes, it got our grandparents through and it will get us through. Don't lose hope. Remember Matthew 6:33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.